people are divided. And so many times we critique those who have no more power than we do rather than question the legitimacy of the institutions which control our time, labor, and resources. We are told to shame our fellow workers for societal ills and to expect politicians and CEOs to solve our problems for us when they don't have the same lived experience or concerns we do. This system isn't broken, it's rigged from the media to the ballot box, not only to create a narrative which serves the elite, but to control even that which we desire, and our options with which to actualize those desires. If they win, this is the world they will create. Solutions won't come from the apparatus which oppresses us. They will come from community-led initiatives to inform, organize, sustain, dismantle, and resist, without asking for permission from illegitimate and arbitrary authority. This revolution is already underway, and we invite you to join us in an electoral direct action senatorial infiltration campaign set to take democracy outside the ballot box. My name is Jane here. Don't just vote. So this November, vote Republican or Democrat and consider the alternative. Anarchy. All right, so we're here with J.M. J.M. Carrico, what's hey, up? Hey, um, not too much. Uh, just hang out with my kids on a Sunday night, basically. Fantastic. So um, to get our listeners up to speed, so uh, J.M. Carrico is running for uh, Senate, correct? That's correct. In Texas. And yes. um, I think that is... Uh, I believe singularly unique, singularly unique about your campaign is that you are a um, definitely a dyed in the wool and uh, with a uh, background to prove it, anti-fascist anarchist running for Congress. That's, that's correct. Yes. <laughs> uh, you, you were in on the ground in Charlotte. Bill, and you've done, you've just been doing a lot of very proactive on the street anti-fascist organizing for a long time. And um, I think that's important for our listeners to understand about your background. And then I guess I'll just let you kind of go and tell us a little bit about why you're running for Senate and what you're all about. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. That's very kind of you. Um, I, uh, I think uh, the reason that I'm using this camp running uh, for Senate is to use this campaign as a megaphone to get the ideas that we've all been proposing for years and years out there to on the biggest stage possible and to uh, get people to uh, consider um, critiquing authority based on whether or not it gives back more than it takes. And if it doesn't, then it's arbitrary and there's a lot of different models we could use. And oftentimes those models are um, much better for everyone than the models we currently use. And to not just uh, seek democracy inside of a ballot box, but to seek it in our workplaces, in our communities. And I think that does several things um, simultaneously when we start to uh, build uh, communalization. Um, it, it can, it can uh, make us detached from needing uh, approval from arbitrary authority. It can uh, help us to be more sustainable in our communities. And maybe most importantly, it can uh, get us caring about our neighbors and caring about um, ourselves and teaching us to uh, be able to, that we can be relying on ourselves and we don't have to require uh, uh, outside apparatuses. And with the internet now, we can be networked 
and do these kind of things in a way that we can learn from each other. Right. And, uh, okay, excellent. So um, why don't you give us, uh, do you have uh, you know, basic sort of pillars of your platform or um, kind of specific issues that are uh, most important to your campaign and what you're running on? Sure. Well, um, I've been involved in uh, youth prison abolition um, projects. I've been involved in labor, um, radical labor union projects. I've been involved in uh, doxing hate groups for a number of years, um, especially focused at the American Renaissance Conference. Um, so uh, those, uh, you know, getting the ideas about um, the dangers of white supremacy and uh, using space that I have to talk about that is certainly a huge part of my campaign. Uh, the dangers of those ideologies that are they're in, already inherent inside of our systems, not just in, uh, in the streets, you know? Um, and then I think that, but I mean, I have a 27 point platform to get to like what you're asking specifically. Um, and, uh, and, uh, so some of those are like, uh, ideas such as uh, a one to 10 pay ratio, wherein instead of you know, continually fighting for a minimum wage that never seems to be enough and because de jour, de facto, the capitalists can raise uh, prices on the goods and, serve, and make it where it's, you know, it's, you know, it just doesn't really cut it. And, and, and so instead of that, we can have like a ratio. So whenever the profits go up, everybody makes a raise. Um, and that can... Help, right, um, as opposed to where we're at now, where we have a one to like three hundred and fifty, even up to three thousand ratio, where you know CEOs of these major corporations are making three hundred and four hundred times what the average laborer who generates all their profit is making. Right, so yeah, productivity is that, are, is, yeah, right. productivity's up and and pay is stagnant. Exactly. While we fight and exactly. screech and scream for a, a hike in minimum wage, <laughs> you know, it is right. ridiculous. Right. SEIU spent eighteen million dollars on the five for fifteen. Imagine if they sent that money, the international sent that money to just eighteen unions on a lottery every year. Um, what they could, what they could do with a million dollars. Um, all of our institutions are worth critiquing. I mean, um, sometimes we hold up these things like bastions. And we don't we don't allow for any critique, and so when we don't allow for any critique, the other side gets a whole lot of ammo. And there's some critiques that we should implement and change, and then there's some critiques that are obviously capitalist propaganda. You know, right? Well, it's like there's you have two ways uh, scenarios under which you can critique capitalism. You can critique it from a place where you're basically under the thumb of it and wrecked by it, yet you still have to participate if you want to. I don't know, eat dinner or you know, like give your kids clothes. So you're not allowed to critique it because even though you hate it, you're still participating in it. Or you're like super successful and you're rich. And um, so you're not allowed to critique it because, you know, you've been successful under it. So it's like, at what point are you allowed to critique it? <laughs> you know, what an oh, amazing right. defense mechanism that capitalism has put up for itself that under no scenario are you allowed in any facet of our society to say, yeah, but is this the best system? And, and that's why I think that lampooning it um, by, by blatantly displaying its flaws through the character of um, our Republicans and Democrats against character for Senate yeah, president yeah, project that yeah. I'm running. Um, yeah, tell uh, that, us a I think little that, bit about that. <laughs> so uh, about a week and a half ago, well, there was this guy. Okay, first, let me tell you who was inspired by it. There was okay. this page that was like uh, Americans Against Communism or something like that, and it was run by this guy, like Jack LaBelle, who we talked and stuff like that. I think that's how you pronounce his name, but I don't really care. Um, and the... <laughs> And uh, he's 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 a uh, he's he's like a alt right guy, and he made this page, and it was just horrible. It was all about like, and he started do he like started like doxing us and stuff like that, and it was just like his arguments were horrible, but it was funny kind of, you know, and um in a certain way because he was just so so like he he would go, the way that he would you know expand reality or you know, whatever you want to call it to sure, get his sure. points across. And, it was uh, laughable so, because it wasn't rooted in any type of factual, verifiable reality, I'm sure, right? I mean, Right, right. And, and so I thought for a second, like, what if I, like, could 
um, critique something from a point where I wouldn't be, you know, bigoted in any way, except for classist. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, it's, it's so like one of the per, one of the people who was uh, who was writing to me, like that. So far as I didn't ever, I used all the proper pronouns for everybody. Uh, uh, you know, to do. Um, I didn't, I didn't, you know, and, and whenever somebody asked me like about like them having a gun because they were trans, I was like, well, I don't really care what, what your gender is. I care if you identify as rich or not. Uh, we have to make sure you're responsible to the establishment in order to own a gun, right. you know? And uh, so like, that was the kind of stuff that was like, you know, it was like, it was like rooted in the fact that like, it doesn't matter what you're, you can, you can be inclusive of these ideas, you know, of, of, of identity politics and, and you should be, and we should have a standard of that and we should hold that standard. We should protect people from that. But if you then, you know, allow for capitalism to take place, you're saying a lot of things, but you're not doing it, right? So, like, you're saying that we can have these things, but that the people who have less money than you, who are also trans, um, people of color, marginalized, um, they don't have the right to actuate their pursuit of happiness the same way you do. Um, so, for instance, like someone like Caitlyn Jenner, um, um, who she is a obviously a capitalist and she has negative views about immigration and these kind of things. Um, so we can see that, you know, I'm just, you know, for instance, uh, that there, there's all kinds of, but at the same time, then there are other people on the left who, who will um, point to anti-imperialism, for instance, um, on, on like the, on behalf of like Assad or whatever. And they'll say that that's actual, uh, anti-imperialism but that's actually counter-imperialism which is, it's uh he's funded by the tent bank which also funds dugan in russia um that he has yes he gets he has he has a democratic um majority but so would a, a hillary clinton or a trump here it's mostly because moderates want security um the people on the ground who are radical or who want anything but an ethno state uh across uh you know seem to be um 100 uh saying that it's either we want him because he's secure or we want him because the, the idea of uh, ethno state nationalism in that region seems uh, 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 amenable uh, to a certain extent. And he, of course he wrote, he colors it in communism and colors it in Marxism um, in his rhetoric or what in his, and, and, and that's, uh, that's what fascists have always done. They've always used what's amenable right. to the left to build right wing power. Um, and it, 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 that's something that when you get, it's, it's a lot, I mean, this, neither side, NATO nor um, this Eurasianist, uh, fourth positionist ideology um, that's kind of being kind of spun amongst the oligarchs of these various countries uh, isn't, are, are good, right? So it's not, it's, it's like Republican and Democrat. And that's kind of how I've been trying to describe to people who aren't really aware of geo geopolitics, you know? Sure. Um, and, and but see, the thing is, people on the left are reading state propaganda from those countries without the critical eye that they would from the uh, United States, you know, and uh, and so it leads to yeah. A, so, so talk to us about explain to us the Republicans and Democrats against Carrico for Senate. Oh my okay, sorry, god! Yeah. So, uh, I um, I was engaged in uh. Uh, a campaign over the last week, uh, basically, wherein I uh, perpetuated myself as this page called Republicans and Democrats for Senate, uh, for uh, against Carrico for Senate. And they were these wealthy business owners who were against what they called workplace supremacy, or worker supremacy, I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> they would say things like, uh, um, I posted on my page, where will you uh, hide when the revolution comes, the meme from Wonder Chosen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would they said stuff like in our bunkers, whether we built off the wealth uh, uh, by creating all these jobs for you ingrates, and uh, you know stuff like that. You know they were just uh, we made it, we made some video we made a, I made a video the first like maybe Wednesday or whatever, and uh, put it out and it was low quality it wasn't very good but it was it was it was relatively funny I just used a voice modifier or whatever. Right. Then I made another video. On I made two videos on Saturday. I spent 13 hours on like with my friend Sam, and like we made a campaign video in which that first in the video kind of is interrupted, but we like subvert it. And by the uh, 
Right, which is that we played your campaign video uh, at the very beginning of the interview before we started talking. So people have seen your uh, campaign video. But Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, sorry. So the, you played uh, the second, that, uh, so the second video. Yeah. For, uh, the page. Yeah. I mean, the second video that was a little bit more, you know, it was a little bit better put together. Um, a little bit more. It has like some pretty funny things. Like it has a steel of linen just staring for a second, like a little bit too long. Um, it has like, uh, I mean, uh, there's a skull that comes out, but it doesn't quite do the effect right. Um, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of little funny things that we added. It was a, it was a good day. It was fun to. Well, and, fun and to I gotta tell our li- sorry, I gotta tell our listeners that I totally debated with the Republicans and Democrats against Carrico for for Senate for like a, a couple hours, I think, the other day, <laughs> and uh, you know, totally had no idea that I was debating <laughs> my comrade. And um, <laughs> so it, it was, it, it came out and, and, and it was actually this morning I started looking at those two other videos and I was like, I wonder if this is him, right? And then I saw your one saying, you know, April Fool's <laughs> and like, but, uh, it's really, it's really fabulous. And I suggest anyone go on to the Republicans and Democrats against Carrico for Senate Facebook page and you can see all the videos that we're talking about. And <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, and when I made the April Fool's announcement, uh, I came back to the page and made sure that, I, I, that the page adamantly denies it. And um, <laughs> it says all April Fool's p- prank. And uh, so I have those screenshots available also from um, where, and we both agree that it's absurd towards the end. But in the middle, we have a good exchange about who's writing the page. And uh, <laughs> Oh, God, it's great stuff. So... Well, let, so let me ask you this, a, a question I think that um, some anarchists, other anarchists might like to hear answered is, you know, there's a general notion in the community that we don't participate really at all in any form of like representative, you know, democracy. And it's, you know, the uh, large no vote yeah. movement kind and of this a kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And um, so what you're doing is... Um, very rare. And I personally have a hell of a lot of respect for it. And so I just kind of want to talk about, you know, have you gotten any sort of pushback from the community? Or, I mean, obviously you must be aware that this dynamic exists. And um, so anyway, I'll just kind of let you say what, whatever you have to say about the issue. So I would say that most of the pushback that I've gotten that, I've, that has been directed actually at me that I've actually heard has been that, uh, been two things. One, that um, like you said, you know, anarchists don't involve themselves in the state affairs, but I can show you, you know, the CNT had elections. Uh, um, there's, there's a person running in New Zealand, uh, uh, Chiapas, uh, for, for a position. Um, there's, you know, but at the same time, and then I've also heard the, the, the thing that well, I should have run for a different office, you know, started on a, a council position level. And, um, well, both of the things are pr- prior to the idea that actually, really desire to win right like because i mean and, I, and, and I, the possibility is there that it could happen but I, it's highly highly doubtful now i have a, i have plans if it does and i wouldn't get and i have like a platform and i have i will really want to get communities to be able to who are the most affected to form their own legislation um that would be the, i would want to make my position obsolete and i'm calling it a senatorial infiltration campaign because i want to be able to filibuster and read the bread book you know what i'm saying like be able to do the things, say the things, subvert the system itself, right? Use the system against itself in some way or another. And, and with the public scrutiny of the last five years or last seven years or so of my work and saying that I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and not compromise my values, you know, for any, uh, and have somebody on the inside that's like, can like, you know, form initiatives and community stuff that can like, you know, be a, uh, a program that's like, you know, not prefigured, um, but just has some sort of like, you know, I, I outlined in my platform um, communalization projects, essentially. Um, autonomous, building autonomous network, sustainable communities capable of defense. Uh, the, uh, the, the idea that uh, I think there's a, it's also, but the thing is, is itself is that if I don't win, I want to use the, the platform uh, to move the ideas forward, to get these ideas out there, to... Um, get people to thinking in a different way to be, get people to think about democracy outside the ballot box and to run gambits. Like if CEOs can work 
uh, and make 500 times the amount that we can. Um, and then 500 workers uh, are making the same amount as he is, or they are, or she is. And uh, then why can they take a vacation for a week and productivity not drop drastically or, you know, profits not drop? But when, if all the workers took a vacation for a week, you would certainly see it drop. Um, yeah. Those 500 workers. So just those kind of gambits, um, just those kind of ideas, getting them to be able to t- subverting the narrative, you know, subverting the ideas. And I've got a CNN and a interview I've done that's going to be coming out soon. I was uh, interviewed by Vice. I'm not sure if that portion is going to be aired, but um, so I'm getting some publicity for um, the campaign. So these ideas can get out there of anarcho-syndicalism, like you said. So, so it's really a, a it's an it's more of a campaign to get the ideas that there's a different way to be out there. Different sure, you got you, you, know you got a bigger microphone. You got a bigger microphone, okay. and and I appreciate that you're like you said, you're not compromising your values as your microphone gets a little bigger. It's it's fantastic. So I support it wholeheartedly, and I want to do whatever I can, which I don't know is all that much, <laughs> but I know that I want to help you with it and push it forward because these are things well, we, that we're not we hearing. In progress, both of us. Yeah. 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 And because these are things that our culture is not hearing. Like I said, we, we talked about in the beginning of our chat about how, um, you know, there's only two scenarios under which you can critique it. Neither and both of them are basically uh, against the rules. You ain't allowed to critique under any circumstances. And so people don't hear the critique. It's not like the masses instantly have this wonderful critique and they don't get to say it. It's that people don't even know how to critique it. And so if they hear the things that you're saying, it might give them more tools or even just make them realize, hey, well, capitalism isn't a um, just natural manifestation of, you know, you know, that like a tree growing out of the ground. It's it's a construct that we've devised and it has a lot of flaws and we can undo it. And so, yeah, I think it's fantastic well, what you're doing. I, I do think that uh, information alone um probably won't motivate people to change unless they're incentivized. So for instance, if not participating in the system is punished more than they're rewarded by not participating and, or they are rewarded more by participating than they are, um, in engaging in non-participation. Uh, if they don't find security and community and the things that they need, if they can, and they can't see a working model of it, it's highly unlikely that uh, even if they know that, that, that they will, they'll stop participating. Um, that's just, that's reality. I think we kind of learned that in the sixties a little bit, uh, uh, was that a lot of, with the hippies and stuff like that, as you can, in, in the peace movement and stuff, you can know all the information and stuff, but then later on in life, if you're incentivized to engage with the system, most people will choose the incentivization. So we have to figure out how to like, at this point in time, we're, we're, we're at a crossroads. I mean, like we're facing near term human extinction, so we have to figure out a model that we can incentivize people to be honest on a very hyperlocal basis. And that means almost in an apolitical way. Because if you get people acting in the way that we want to do libertarian socialism, um, then before they even have to say those words, they could be doing those things. And they can wrap their own ideology around it. Now, again, I'm not trying to put the onus on anybody to like engage with reactionaries or whatever. But at the same time, we have to start where we are and we can move people from there. Um, I think, uh, so Agreed. It, it seems like we have to, you know, it's an uphill, it's an uphill battle. It's always been an uphill battle and it's going to continue to be one, you know? Um, but it's, uh, there is a top to the hill <laughs> at some point, sure you know, we're, we're, yeah, we're, sure. we're getting there. We're getting there bit by bit. And I think what you're doing is definitely contributing to that. So, uh, I, like I said, I appreciate it. Um, uh, Jam, it's been fantastic talking with you. Unless there's anything else that you really uh, feel you want to say, please have at it. Um, but really appreciate you hanging out with us. Well, thank you so yeah, much definitely. for uh, thank you, thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor. Um, if I had anything else to say, it'd be basically that if you want to check out uh, the platform, it's available. Uh, it's 27 points. I have a little bit of a speech that I have before it. It's uh, on my page. You can find that. You can message me on Facebook. I'm totally uh, down for that. 
uh, just if you have any questions, uh, this is meant to be as much as possible to get power in the hands of the workers, get power in the hands of uh, the communities if if I do win. And if if not, then to get the ideas out there, you know, um, to be able to get people thinking in a different way, which incentivizes people to, um, you know, to act in a different way, at least in a certain kind, at least that they can see that those models are being signal boosted and that they're available and they're working. So what, that's the second part is to signal boost those ideas to get people's uh, attention on the great community organizing that's already being done all throughout uh, the state and the country. Excellent. Excellent. J.M. Carrico, anarcho-syndicalist candidate for Senate from the great state of Tennessee. Uh, Thanks for hanging out with us, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate thanks it. for joining us. Hey, really you. appreciate you coming on our show, bro. No problem. Anytime. The Spectrum haunts the 2018 election cycle. And that Spectrum is Carico. Carico seeks to undermine our youth for authority through programs like Kids Out of Cages. This leads to entitlement. They want to sabotage our business models. So-called workplace democracy. Pay ratios that can't hide with their work. Worker supremacy. Erica is infiltrating our democracy to take wealth from innocent job creators and the politicians who support us. Carico is an Antifa terrorist. If they win, this is the world they will create. This November, vote Republican or Democrat and consider the alternative. Anna.